So, good afternoon to the panel. It's uh, missing one at the moment, but um, this is my project presentation for the electrical assignment. I created a breathalyzer. I'll explain why I'm turning it on now in just a few minutes. <laughs> Okay, so my problem statement was to design and build a personal portable ESP32 control with digital breathalyzer. The design will be able to assist our drivers in knowing whether they are over the legal allowable limit of your breath to alcohol concentration and thereby reducing the amount of drunk driving uh, incidents in South Africa. Yeah. So, with the breathalyzer I made, the main points I kept in mind was to keep it reusable cost-effective, uh, with easily available hardware to make it reasonably lightweight, to keep the portability into it, easy to assemble, robust, as if someone's drunk, they could drop it quite easily, to get an accurate reading, as accurate as you can, with a breathalyzer. Um, I don't know why it's split, but multiple alerts for when you are drunk, so you've got your audible, your touch, your visual, um, it's easy to store and easy to repair in case someone does drop it while they're drunk and something breaks. Um, yeah, with the research, there are of course many types of breathalyzers. You've got your chemical, you've got your replaceable digital where you install a chemical based one and you replace the uh, sensor each time. And then you've got your digital breathalyzers, which most are either really expensive or of not a very good quality. And your ethanol sensor options are rather limited when it comes to creating something like this. Uh, these are just some of the cheaper ones that I found online. So you can see 159 rand, just the size of a key ring, and you can see the ratings where they say it doesn't work. Just blocked out the name, of course. Um, there's also another one of the cheaper ones with the replaceable chemical. And then you've got this one, which is 899 rand, it's not on sale. And this is what I am attempting to compete with in terms of the accuracy. Um, so when it comes to the statistical research, uh, last year, December, from the 1st to the 18th of December, uh, there were 767 deaths on our roads in South Africa. And Kazun Natal, where I actually live, was the most dangerous place to stay during that time, being 162 deaths between the 1st to the 18th. And also, our drunk driving in South Africa has been increasing a lot. Where, as you see, in 2017, uh, 75,000 people were arrested for drunk driving. So this is still excluding the amount of people drunk driving. This is just the people that were caught. And 2018 had an increase of 14.8%, up to 86,000 people that were arrested under drunk driving. So here's my bullet materials. So it's the MQ3 ethanol sensor, ESP32, just the LED, the buzzer, a uh, little vibration motor, of course the filaments that I printed the casing out of, some jumper leads to wire everything together, and one 18650 battery. My total came up to 350 rand. Uh, these are just some basic designs. So the first one was before I'd even looked at exactly what I was going to be putting inside, I just had a basic idea of what the components looked like. And then as it went on, just to keep all the components together in a reasonably compact idea and to allow for air flow within it as you are technically blowing air into the actual device. Um, just a breakdown of my project. Okay. So it's the, how I broke the project down for myself in order to go about completing it. So it's decided on breathalyzer, did research, found out what components I'd be needing, ordered the components and just went through the list until it's troubleshoot and print the housings, assemble and present. And I also did the same for my programming where you power on, changes the LED color to orange, uh, which it was at first as it heats up the sensor itself. It displays a loading bar to say that it is currently heating, which is two and a half minutes. And then as the user blows, the LED will change color and it will reset, of course, after, after a certain amount of time. Then when it came to my programming, just some of the screenshots. Uh, I also didn't have much experience with programming previously, so it's quite a challenging thing for me. But luckily I managed to start getting the hang of it. And when it came to actual my calculations, which are on the next so, slide, um, here, I 
took uh, 250 readings as soon as it turns on, uh, with a delay of <coughs> 10 milliseconds in between, to get an ambient level for the room that you're currently in. Whether it's at a bar or petrol station, it will always calculate the ambient alcohol uh, volume in the air around you. And then, once the sensor starts up, um, I just calculated to get it as close to a zero reading as I can, so that when you blow it, it counts on your level, not the room's level, plus your level. Uh, just more programming, basic wiring diagram. Unfortunately, most of my components, I couldn't necessarily find the, the exact board I used, or the exact MP3 sensor, but I just laid it out as best I could. Um, when it comes to the MP3 sensor itself, which I'm using as my actual main sensor, it's a ceramic tube that is covered by a tin dioxide coating, which is where the actual heating element comes from. Um, it can do an analog or a digital input. I use it as analog, and its optimal operating temperature is at 40 degrees Celsius. Then there's just the screen, so it's three introduction screens, then it's a heating and while it's calculating just the ambient level of the room. And then for when you are drunk or sober, this place. <laughs> okay, so here's just my software assembly. Um, everything put together, and it's my front cover, which is, I try to keep all one piece or most of it. Um, then the back cover, the power switch for the side, and then just the purchase components, I uh, just took some screenshots of the SolidWorks models for them as well, which is uh, my sensor, the battery, low vibration motor that I'm using, and a 5 volt buzzer. And this is just a basic diagram of the ESP32 board that I'm using. It comes with a built-in OLED display, which worked out quite nicely for my project, and a battery shield on the back. Okay, some of the technical difficulties. I had a few components go faulty. One of the main boards, when we got it delivered, the screen had a crack in it, and then I blew the other one's charging port, I put the battery in the wrong way, so we sorted that out. I uh, had one of my main sensors break, so it was a bit of a learning experience. Um, but also learned to program on the Arduino and the ESP32. The ESP32 is very similar, but there were a few things that I really struggled with with getting the display to work, which thankfully Chris helped me quite a bit on. Uh, failed prints on my printer that I created last term for my assignment. Had a few things go wrong with that. Of course, shipping delays and then just the trying to calculate the heating time of the ethanol sensor. Technical success. Like most of my components fit together very nicely. The sensor itself is actually very stable. The ESP32 uh, board that I ordered was actually a perfect uh, product for what I was designing and building. The programming actually went really well after I figured out how to get the screen to work on the ESP32 and all the 3D printed parts fit together rather well. Uh, for lessons learned, it's time management, uh, planning for more unforeseen delays, <coughs> uh, late shipping, that type of thing. Uh, purchasing my parts even earlier, even though I think I ordered them in the second week of this term. Uh, learn to communicate with those around me for ideas or just some advice on uh, with the programming, which I was I'm very unsure about in the beginning of this term. Uh, discovered new programming tools to assist me as well. I had done very slight bit of programming previously, but uh, very unknowledgeable. So to learn the new programming tools and commands like a while loop um, was very useful for me. And yeah, okay. My possible improvements on the project. Currently it's using an MP3 sensor, which from my research was the best sensor at the time. However, I found out that an MQ303 sensor, it's a smaller uh, sensor with less heating up time, so you can get your readings quicker. Um, I can also create a more ergonomic design for everything, uh, get an injection molded case to just make it a bit more durable. Add some push buttons, as I am wanting to link this uh, breathalyzer with the Uber app on your phone. So if you are drunk, you can press a push button and it will open up the app ready for you to order an Uber to assist in making sure that you don't drink and drive. Uh, and then manufacturing, if I do try to take this into manufacturing, is to integrate most of the components into a single board as it will just be more comfortable.
contact and a cheaper solution as well as I won't have so many extra features that are n completely unneeded for this. Okay, when it comes to ethical outcomes there isn't too much with this other than that it does reduce drinking and driving on our roads. Hopefully that is the point of the entire project um, and that there is zero wastage or byproducts by this. So it's a fully rechargeable battery. Uh, you don't have to replace any uh, chemical sensors or anything like that. It's all reusable products. And this is the, my main reason why I did this project was that South Africa is actually the world's worst country for drunk driving related incidents. In turn, the percentage of drunk driving accidents relative to the total accidents in our country is 58% as of 2015, which as you can see is 24% higher than the person in second, the country in second which is not a good statistic. Yeah, and then I've just got my references from all the places I got some information. And then Chris and Nick helped me out a lot. Nick gave me some good ideas. And Chris helped me out with the, getting the screen of my ESP32 to work. And then one Reddit user named Coconut Banana, never knew his proper name. Um, he just assisted me in just working out how I can use my calculations to work well together. Yeah, and then that's it. And I'm just going to plug in the buzzer now. I was a bit hesitant, as it is a rather annoying buzzer. We know that buzzer will work. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and then just use some acetone at all. Put the sensor at quite a high reading, but to give you an idea, to show the change in the LED. And then, yeah, the vibrations and all of that. Okay. Did you blow? Yeah, I would imagine you should blow. Yeah, I was just trying to. Of course, now it's delaying. <laughs> but I think it's always now when you blow. Yeah, <coughs> it was buzzing earlier. <laughs> Yeah, I'm reading 800 of us. Yeah, sorry, Ad. Sorry, I unfortunately my mom took my bottle of wine, otherwise we could have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would have been a good idea. Well, I mean, Where's that brand? <laughs> <laughs> it's brand